it's no one. No one's copying me, or at least not in the way that some people throw the accusation around. <laughs> It'll make sense. Watch the video. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Solid Entertainment. And before I move forward, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video. Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a popular and fast-growing subscription service with the goal of not only promoting new and emerging authors, but also connecting readers with books that they love. The Book of the Month team curates an eclectic assortment of new and early releases for readers to enjoy. You all know how important reading is to me because of my struggles with dyslexia, so I was super excited for the chance to partner with Book of the Month for this video. Here are their selections for the month of January, and this month I chose The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai and Outlawed by Anna North. A Book of the Month subscription is $14.99, for hardcover selections, but with my code NEWBOOKS, you can get your first book for $9.99. Remember to use code NEWBOOKS and let me know which title you chose for January. Thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. So Amanda, if no one's copying you, why are you making this video? Because some people think that either someone is copying me, or I am copying other people, or other commentary or other film review channels are copying each other and I want to talk about it. <laughs> and technically the title is not clickbait because I used a question mark. So I'm going to talk about commentary topics with this phenomenon, I guess you could call it that, uh, as well as with films, but I'm mainly going to focus on film reviews. The channels that I'm going to be talking about are technically considered commentary channels, but they're making reviews on movies and that's where this all came about. So there's a lot of overlap. I rarely get accused of copying other YouTubers. Typically what I hear is people being like, oh, so-and-so already covered this or um, it just seems like everyone's dogpiling on this person. I don't know why you're jumping on the bandwagon, which in commentary at the end of the day, if we're all talking about the same current event, there's a very real chance that we're all going to have the same pieces of information to share. And the differences in those videos are going to probably come from either new research that we were able to find or personal experiences or personal takes and opinions based on the information that is already out there. So yes, technically we're talking about the same stuff, but we're having our own takes on it. That's not copying, that's just media, okay? <laughs> I try to avoid the dog piling, especially in the commentary sphere. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but usually I try to find a different angle to talk about something or like, hey, I have a personal connection to this element of this, so we're gonna talk about that, but also talk about the facts. Usually I try to avoid talking about something that everyone is talking about. And even then, if I were to just completely take that out of my mind, ignore any morality or anything like that, and like, okay, this is trending, we're talking about this and this only, I physically wouldn't be able to do that with every major commentary topic that comes about. It's just, that's so much fucking work, okay? There's no possible way for me to cover every single thing that is going on at one time. If you wanna hear me talk about miscellaneous events that happen in social media, follow me over on Twitter. The comments I get a lot, especially on commentary reviews of social media personality products and services, such as financial freedom movement and the like, Obviously, everyone talked about the financial freedom movement. If you look up anything about the financial freedom movement, I'm fairly certain that for a long time, if not still, all of the videos are from other people reviewing it and not anything actually associated with the financial freedom movement. But even then, if you watch all of these videos from the financial freedom movement, yes, we're all talking about the same information and the same courses, but we're all going to bring something different to these reviews because we are different people, because our experiences are going to be different on these platforms, because we have other opinions outside of actually Jake Paul and Jake Paul's content and the financial freedom movement, and we all have outside influence to bring into the reviews. That's the case with everything, and that's especially the case with media reviews. Side note on the financial freedom movement, I've talked about this before. I always get comments it's like, haha, Jake Paul made more money off of YouTubers than actual fans. Good. I would much rather have myself and other YouTubers get scammed out of money than underage young fans. And besides whatever I was scammed out of on those platforms, I made back multiple times that in AdSense. So it really doesn't matter. I'd rather have the money get taken or scammed from someone who can afford to lose it. Does that make sense? But my main point for this was talking about accusations of copying in film reviews here on YouTube. So reviewing films and media is a portion of my content and I've mostly figured out the proper way for me to go about it for my channel. Most YouTubers are either getting early access to things or they are getting access at the same time as everyone else. Especially with a lot of 2020 and now 2021 film releases being pushed onto streaming services, if we're not getting early access, we're all pretty much getting access to the films at the same time. And we're seeing the same 
movies. I didn't get accused of copying other film review channels or copying other creators in general until I believe it was my Artemis Fowl video where I did a review of the Artemis Fowl movie released on Disney Plus as someone who is not familiar with the books. Now, granted, I did put this video out a little later because I'd kind of put off watching the movie. Really had no desire to watch the Artemis Fowl movie. Like I said, I didn't read the books. I wasn't attached to the characters. So I wasn't really invested or excited to watch it when it got dropped on Disney Plus. I was like, oh, that's the kiss of death, but that was really it. It wasn't until people on Twitter were talking about how horrible it was that I was like, I gotta see this for myself, and oh my god, was that movie bad? So obviously, I decided to make a review on it. So I think I put my video out a full week after, if not longer, from when the movie was dropped on Disney+. Plus. Now obviously, the main issue here, and this will be a trend in the next couple of things I talk about, is that most other YouTubers had already put out their reviews of Artemis Fowl. So I look like I'm late to the party and like I was only talking about it because other YouTubers were talking about it. So not only was I reviewing a movie a full week later, I was reviewing a movie that everyone else had also seen. Artemis Fowl was a mess, so obviously I was going to talk about the bits that I thought were a mess. However, obviously, other YouTubers also agreed that those bits were a mess in their own right, so they talked about it in their own videos. Are you seeing my point? We all reviewed the same bad movie, so obviously we had similar takes about the same bad movie. But the main criticism I got is because I referred to the Aculos, which was the thing that they were trying to get in Artemis Fowl, as a MacGuffin which is a term used to describe something that is all powerful, all important, everyone's trying to get it, but we're not really sure what's going on. We don't really know why it's important, it's not really explained. It's just a thing that everyone wants and everyone has to have, and it's just used as a shitty plot device. That's it, it's a film term. But because I had used that term, and because other people had used that term, I was accused of copying also, because I put my video out a week later than everyone else. Side note, in this particular review, all of the channels they accused me of copying were like major fucking channels, like close to a million, if not bigger than a million subscriber channels. Even if I was stealing from them, it does nothing to those channels. <laughs> After my Artemis Fowl video, I was kind of just thinking like, okay, it's just because I did the video late, so if I'm going to review media moving forward, I just gotta do it as quickly as possible. You know, I can't wait, I can't put it off, or I'm just not gonna review the movie or the show. Now there are different pros and cons of doing quick turnaround times on movie and media reviews. For example, with my Umbrella Academy season two review, the video didn't do so well at first because not a lot of people had seen the season yet, and so me putting out my video four days after the season aired, was too quick. And however, with my video on Mulan, which I filmed the same day it was available to be purchased on Disney Plus and then put it out the following Tuesday, that video did incredibly well, but mainly because no one really wanted to pay $30 to watch Mulan. But here I'm not just talking about studio releases. Sometimes movies are so bad in their premise or they're very gimmicky that they are designed for people to talk about them or they just attract a certain type of attention from YouTubers. For example, Swiped. Swiped was a bad movie released on Netflix and it was such a hot topic at the time that the director started like going after YouTube reviewers and like threatening to sue them and stuff because the mo for talking bad about her movie even though her movie was really bad. If you don't believe me, go watch Swiped. Noah Centineo is in it. However, Swiped mainly got attention on YouTube because both Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden posted their Swipe reviews, I think on the same day. Now it is hard to verify this at this time because I believe Drew Gooden actually deleted his video because of all the issues with the director and stuff. Um, I'm not sure if it's still up. Certain things are just gimmicky and they're going to draw attention of YouTubers, even people who don't usually do film reviews. Like I said, things are just bad and just kind of attract the wrong attention that they don't want, or they're gimmicky with the sole purpose of getting people to talk about them. Let's talk about the KFC Lifetime movie. KFC partnered with Lifetime to make a short romantic movie titled A Recipe for Seduction. You can't look at that movie and tell me it's not bait, which is exactly why I didn't review it. There are certain things you look at and you just kind of already know, okay, a lot of people are going to be talking about this, not just because it's new, but because it's gimmicky as hell. As the holidays draw near, a young heiress contends with the affection of a suitor handpicked by her mother, when the handsome chef, Colonel Sanders, arrives with nothing more than his fried chicken recipe and a dream. He sets in motion a series of events that unravel into chaos. Watch Mario Lopez star as the Colonel in KFC and Lifetime's 
first original mini movie. So with a premise like that and it being a whopping 16 minutes long, obviously this was an easy movie for people to talk about on YouTube, which is the main reason I didn't do a video on this movie and also I didn't want to watch it. So if I didn't have to, I wasn't gonna. Obviously the movie's only 16 minutes long, so there wasn't a whole lot to sink your teeth into. And though I didn't watch the movie, I watched a lot of people's videos on this movie. For example, uh, Amanda the Jedi did a review of the movie, but also played the Colonel Sanders dating simulator. Oh, you poor thing. The things we do for content, guys. But it wasn't until a couple of days later that I saw Jarvis's tweet on Twitter. Dude, the comments calling my video a ripoff are so annoying. I didn't see anyone else's video on the topic. I couldn't have turned around a video that quickly anyway. His video came out a little later than everyone else's. And also, I think the main thing with these comments from people about like, oh, you're copying, your video's a ripoff, is people who don't understand how long editing actually takes, especially if you're not working with an editor. I do all my own editing, so do a lot of other YouTubers. Could it be faster if we streamlined the process and hired an editor? Yeah, but there's a cost to that. Even then, there's edits that need to be made. There's changes that need to be made. Yes, some videos can be edited faster than others, but it's usually not a quick process. And for me in particular, I at the very least post every Tuesday, okay? So if I finish a video on a Saturday, I'm not gonna just release it on a Saturday. I'm gonna save it to Tuesday so I don't have to film another video for Tuesday. Jarvis goes on to say, also I submitted my video to my sponsor before anyone else's video came out, but it's not like that counts for anything. I can't just throw my work away because it turned out to be a popular idea. There are plenty of times where I've started researching a video and then I see someone's tweet talking about how they're also talking about that. Am I just gonna suddenly change my video idea? No, because someone's gonna get something different from my video than they are from another YouTuber's video. Same thing here when you involve sponsorships. I usually have to give a video to a sponsor 48 hours in advance. And in that time, they can either approve it right away, okay, great, it's good to post, or they want edits made, and then that adds more time to a video getting released. There are things that happen behind the scenes that aren't just hitting record and publishing a video. A lot of other YouTubers commented on uh, Jarvis's videos talking about how they know that he's not copying and they also get these same comments and all of that, which I was like, okay, cool, it's not just me. <laughs> I also think there's some things with certain people where they just don't look at the dates of an upload. This isn't really part of my point for this video, but there are also instances where I get comments on videos from two years ago telling me that I'm copying someone who posted their video a month ago. Why? Because people don't look at upload dates. <laughs> it's right there in the description box, guys. I'm just letting you know. I don't even engage with those comments because like, I know the truth of it. And I know someone's gonna say, hey, any of these comments that people are leaving, saying that you're copying, they don't really matter. It's like, yeah, sure, maybe, but it still doesn't feel good for someone to accuse me of copying another creator. The same with Jarvis, the same with Danny Gonzalez, the same with any other commentary or film review YouTuber who gets comments saying that they're copying someone because we made a similar joke about the same shitty element of a movie. But also, I have no control over who's reading those comments. A new subscriber could see that and be like, oh, they're stealing this from another person, and then I don't get a new subscriber. You know, I know that's like the nitty gritty of it all. That's less of the point here. The overall conclusion of this is that that obviously if we're all talking about the same movie or the same topic, we're going to have similar takeaways or similar critiques or even similar jokes based off of what we are seeing. However, what we are all bringing into the same movie is our own personal experiences and knowledge about topics and our lives that do affect the overall outcome of the video. Even movies that I've reviewed in videos, I go and watch other people's videos after my video is out because I wanna see if they caught something I missed or if they had an explanation for something that I had questions about. We all have the ability to learn from each other. You all can get different things from different creators. I'm getting hippy dippy now, but you get my point, I'm hoping, in that there's going to be similarities in the things that we talk about when we're talking about similar content or similar commentary topics. Topics. And that's where I'm gonna end this. <laughs> you know what, forget the usual question segment. Who's a commentary or film review YouTuber that you like? Comment down below. <laughs> Do not link their channel because I block links here. Just comment what their channel name is, that'll be fine. And that's gonna be it, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be up here. Thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. And that's gonna be it, have a lovely day, goodbye. I mean, I guess this kind of works in KFC's favor, you know, even all of us talking about it because now I kind of want KFC, but I don't want chicken. I want just like the mac and cheese 
and the mashed potatoes and the biscuits. That's all I want. And that's not enough for me to justify getting in my car and going to KFC. Thank you, Elaine, Alan, Elise, Braden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Essen, Evan, Feckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Jacory, Jakers, Joe, John, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Mean Lord, the Red, Michael, Michael, Jenna, Nathaniel, Pat, Pollock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Robbie, Sam, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Tyrone, Wendy, William, Zendry.